All right, gang, here we go. This is for Chem 2 Unit 11. We're going to talk about Lewis acids and bases. So we've this is the third definition for acids and bases we've talked about. Now, the interesting thing is the Bronsted-Lowry acids and base definition was developed the same year as Gilbert Lewis came up with his definition for acids and bases, 1923, the year of the acids. All right, so, um, so Lewis decided to na name his or identify what is an acid or base instead of following um, the hydrogen or that proton, uh, he, you follow the electron pair. All right, and so this makes it, uh, in to one sense, more robust. Okay, it covers more uh, definitions. Uh, so, for example, all Bronsted-Lowry acids are Lewis acids, uh, but not all Lewis acids are Bronsted-Lowry acids. So it's kind of like that whole uh, all squares are a rectangle, but not all rectangles are squares kind of situation. Uh, the other thing is that it makes it a little harder to use because with Bronsted-Lowry, uh, you're just following that hydrogen. You're looking at or what's losing the hydrogen in here what's gaining a hydrogen here with uh, and so that's pretty easy to follow because when we write out a chemical reaction we we include the hydrogens um, but with the Lewis acids to figure out which one's a Lewis acid and base we really have to look for these electron pairs and when we write out a chemical reaction we don't write out uh, where the electrons are and so our lives get a little bit more complicated um, and they don't quite work out the same all right so in a Lewis acid all right electron pairs uh, are in a Lewis acid there they are electron pair acceptors in a Lewis base they are electron pair donors okay and so we're uh, so your Lewis base is going to have an extra set of electrons that it can give away all right or share all right and so that's one of the big differences is that you'll find that in uh, things that don't apply to Bronsted Lowry acid bases and they are Lewis acid base uh, is the, or is they are forming a new bond, all right? Instead of just trading a hydrogen, they're forming like a, a new one compound, all right? Um, and so let's look at some examples here. So here's uh, hydrogen going to ammonia, okay? Um, and so this would be a Lewis acid base reaction because this guy has this extra electron right here, and this guy does not. Okay, and so this would give up these uh, this pair of electrons to this hydrogen. So this would be our base, our Lewis base, and this would be our Lewis acid. All right, and then we form this product. Okay, the ammonium. All right, here's another example, and so this would be a Lewis acid and a Bronsted-Lowry, or this would be a Lewis acid base reaction, but it's also a Bronsted-Lowry acid base reaction because what a, something would have had to give up this hydrogen, so that would be your proton donor, and this ammonia is accepting that proton, being your proton acceptor. All right. And then here, we've got a Lewis acid base reaction uh, that's not a Bronsted-Lowry acid base reaction. So you've got ammonia with this lone pair. Okay, it's got that extra electron and it's donating it to this boron and they're making this new bond right here. All right, and so this new bond is being formed. So you've got, uh, you've got the Lewis base, this ammonia, sharing it with this boron trifluoride. This boron does not have a lone pair right here. Okay, and so uh, and now they're sharing it. So you've got a Lewis base, Lewis acid, pretty simple. Uh, the biggest like primary example they say like pre like the the example that's probably most common is those hydrated metal cations we talked about a couple videos ago when we talked about um, whether or what kind of uh, why transition metals form acidic solutions you know transition metal cations um, and remember so what occurs here is that this uh, this transition metal whatever it may be gets surrounded and hydrated by these uh, these water molecules all right and so the bigger and more cations this transition metal ha or uh, bigger charges okay these transition metals have uh, that means that this electron density gets shifted towards them so here's here's uh, something that has a one plus charge and um, so this you know this is already polar so these electrons are being pulled down here towards the oxygen uh, and because of this positive charge they're pulled off even more so um, this this electron density if we're just going to draw it you know just a guesstimate might look something like this okay um, and then but here because there's a three plus charge this is pulling much harder so this electron density if we were going to draw that this electron density might look something like this 
All right, because this is three times as strong as either of these hydrogen that's pulling out on it. So these hydrogens are much weaker attached, and we know that uh, acids increase in strength when the bond strength decreases. And so because this uh, because this three plus cation is pulling harder on the uh, the oxygen, it pulls and kind of sucks all those electrons down towards it. And so those hydrogens are even more out there, kind of naked on their own. All right, and so um, and so this is kind of really one of the things that we need to think about when we're thinking about Lewis acid base reactions is and this is really a very common reaction of where are these electrons going etc and following those electrons can be kind of a tricky concept to start thinking about especially you know when we come from bronze to the uh, Lowry acid base it's pretty straightforward you know protons this guy's giving up a proton this guy's accepting a proton and you just kind of run with it and then now we've got these uh, electrons and the uh, Lewis acid bases become uh, very very important when you work and when you move on to um, uh, organic chemistry all right and you really start having to pay attention well which one's the Lewis acid which one's the Lewis base how are how are these sharing these electrons or giving up these electrons and moving forward from there all right so do your practice problems let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you on the flip side